Uh, to further the disinformation going on. Uh, Ms. Wiley, in a response to a question, you stated that the decision in Missouri v. Biden was vacated by the appellate court. Is that correct? I did, and I want to correct that because Mr. Sauer is right. The appropriate word is stayed. Administratively stayed. So it hasn't been stayed. vacated or dismissed like Mrs. Sanchez it's said. It's stayed, which means it cannot be implemented right now. Okay, because I, you know, I didn't want us to censor your disinformation that you stated as a factual assertion earlier. So I did misspeak, uh, and I apologize. Thank you for clarifying that for us. And to talk about more evidence about, uh, I think it's interesting, there's a lot in this opinion, and I just, you know, I have limited time, but I think illustrating some of the actions that the Biden administration took to, to censor speech is very important. I'm gonna read specifically from the opinion. Explicit threats are an obvious form of coercion, but not all coercion needs be explicit. I'm on page 97 of the opinion. The following illustrative specific actions by defendants are examples of coercion exercised by the White House defendants. A, cannot stress the degree to which this needs to be resolved immediately. Please remove this count immediately. Sounds like a directive from the White House to me to social media companies. Accuse Facebook of causing political violence by failing to censor false COVID-19 claims. F, this is exactly why I want to know what reduction actually looks like. If reduction means pumping our most vaccine hesitant audience with Tucker Carlson saying it does not work, then I'm not sure it's reduction, implying that they're reducing uh, the information on that. Questioning how the Tucker Carlson video had been demoted since there were 40,000 shares. Wanting to know why Alex Berenson had not been kicked off Twitter because Berenson was the epicenter of disinformation and radiated outward to the pers persuadable public. And I'm just skipping through here. I'm not even going through all these. Flatterly stated, not to sound like a broken record, but how much content is being demoted and how effective are you at mitigating reach and how quickly? Flattery told Facebook, are you guys effing serious? I want an answer on what happened here and I want it today. Sounds like a pretty explicit threat to me. Number, uh, letter M, White House Press Secretary Saki stated, and I quote, we are in regular touch with these social media platforms and those engagements typically happen through members of our senior staff, but also members of our COVID-19 team. We're flagging problematic posts for Facebook that spread disinformation. Saki also stated, one of the White House asks of social media companies was to create a robust enforcement strategy. Oh, Saki stated on the February 1st, 2022 White House press conference that the White House wanted every social media platform to do more to call out misinformation and disinformation and to uplift accurate information. Another one, hey folks, wanted to flag the below tweet and I'm wondering if we can get moving on the process of having it removed ASAP. Sounds like a pretty explicit uh, demand from the White House to me. Again, quoting the opinion, these actions are just a few examples of the unrelenting pressure the defendants exerted against social media companies. This court finds the above examples demonstrate that plaintiffs can likely prove, likely prove, the White House defendants engage in coercion to induce social media companies to suppress free speech. Uh, Mr. Sauer, in the limited time that I have, can you just comment further on, these are just some of the highlights that are in the opinion, and illustrate to us all of the evidence of the White House censoring the American public and working with social media companies to accomplish that. It's very telling that the judicial findings uh, are quite specific on the specific threats. So there's several ways you can violate the First Amendment if you're a government official. One is coercion, one is significant encouragement, one is joint participation where you've insinuated yourselves into private decision making. The court found all of those present here. And with respect to those White House communications, there's a series of specific judicial findings that these statements were threatening. They were threatening adverse legal consequences. There's multiple findings, for example, that uh, White House spokesperson Saki's public statements explicitly linked the threat of adverse legal consequences to the White House's demands for censorship, which we didn't know at the time, but now know were being very aggressively peppered on the social media platforms while she was making those public statements. So you have public statements from the White House. Also, uh, uh, White House Communications Director Bedingfield, there's a very specific judicial finding on that. Threatening adverse legal consequences in public if there's not greater censorship. And in private, you've got Rob Flaherty, Andy Slavitt, other White House officials saying, take this down, take this down. Um, Do more to take down borderline um, content. Time of the gentleman has expired. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have unanimous consent request. Gentleman from Louisiana. There's a lot of talk about this uh, preliminary injunction, so I'd like to enter into the record 155 page court opinion, the memorandum ruling on a request for preliminary injunction in the matter of State of Missouri and Louisiana v. Biden. 
uh, from the U.S. District Court, Western District, Louisiana, Monroe Division, and also the Fifth Circuit's administrative stay, yep. which does not address the merits. I yield back. Uh, with, uh, without objection. Mr. Chair, I'd like the unanimous consent to enter into the record an article um, that say it's pro F RFK Jr. Super PAC has deep ties to Marjorie Taylor Greene, George Santos, which discusses the Super PAC title Heal the Divide, which states that only Robert F. Kennedy Jr. can unite the nation and start healing America, and also discusses Mr. Kennedy's discussions with Mr. Trump about working in his administration. Uh, without objection, uh, the, the chair now recognizes the uh, gentlelady from Texas, I believe is, is that the cue? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Garcia, Mr. you recognize me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, 